Incredible. Um, I think 42 after two, maybe 58 after three, you know, and your whole, or maybe even more. No, it might have been more than that. So at, at that point, you're starting to think, okay, if I get five out of him, I'll be pleased. And um, he got better. Uh, which is impressive and another just brilliant outing by him. Joe, you've always talked about how he's been a competitor and he wants to be out there contributing, but has he even surprised you a little bit? Um, it, it, we saw it last September. Um, that was the change that I saw in CC, where I saw him pitch well, and that's why, you know, we were we had a competition in spring training, and but we believed in CC because he's done it so often, and we don't make too much of spring training and. Um, I mean, he's been as good as it gets. I mean, he really has. So for a guy that was a, a power pitcher, could blow his fastball by people, how hard is it to make the transition into the pitcher he is now? I think it's difficult um, because, you know, when you have 97, 98 in the tank, it's always you can rely on that sometimes when you're struggling with the other stuff. But now, you know, he has found a cutter that's been extremely effective. I thought he used his breaking ball pretty good tonight. Um, he got out of some big jams. He got in a situation where he had Miguel Cabrera up with first and third and one out. Got a great double play, I think, on a changeup. He's just pitching. Wally. Joe, I know we've talked a lot about the knee brace helping and all, but isn't it more a case of a guy who's suddenly gotten used to a different repertoire here? Oh, I, I think so. Yeah, I think so. But I think my point is the knee brace allowed him to do that, that, you know, all of a sudden – he could land correctly, and his changeup wasn't cutting, and he could spot his fastball better because he has to, um, because he doesn't have the 97, 98. That's what I'm saying, but he understands who he is. You're right. Dan. He did pitch better last September, but obviously had a tough April as well. Is there something different between his April and May and now early June? I, I just think his stuff has gotten better. Um, you know, it wasn't really – a lot of those games weren't favorable conditions for anybody in the month of April. Um, but I think his cutters improved and um, his velocities went up a little bit and he's pitched better. Who else? Dan? You've also let him go longer the last two outings. Is that just more faith in, in him? Yeah, I mean, I, he's throwing the ball well. Um, you know, CeCe has always been a guy that has – been better when he's worked more. Um, he's that's always been who he is, and um, you know we've been able to stretch him out and ask him to give us more pitches, and he's doing a really good job. And it's been on normal rest; it hasn't been on extra rest. Anyone else? Wally. Joe, this is five in a row now for you guys. You had a six-game winning streak about a month ago, and then followed it with with a bad stretch. What makes you think that it'll be different this time? Uh, well. You know, our, our bad stretch was not as bad as our other bad stretches, you know, so I, I think that helped. Um, I, I just think that offensively we're swinging the bats better um, in this stretch, and that's the difference. All the way in the back right, Joe. Joe, something like 16 out of 18 on, on Hope Week, 5-0 and this year. Is, is there anything to that correlation? You know, I I guess, you know, it, the, the guys enjoy it. Um, and it's just a good thing happening here, and uh, – we seem to play well uh, during Hope Week, so we thought we'd have it next week. <laughs> Dan. Uh, you used uh, Patances in the eighth, but Swarzak in the ninth. Did you not have someone? I did not have Miller. Okay. But to use Patances before Swarzak then just seemed. Well, I had Chapman. Okay. So, you know, so if Swarzak gives up a run, you know, that sort of thing. So I'm going to use Dylan in that part of the order, too.